The majority of real estate agents use some kind of calendar, but only a small percentage actually stick to it. And there's two common mistakes I see with the agents I work with. The first mistake is that they enter an appointment and dot the appointments out for the week and then leave the rest of the calendar blank. And they wonder at the end of the week why they didn't get much done. The other mistake is the complete opposite. They jam pack everything from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep. Every single minute of the day is jam packed full of all these things and they are completely overwhelmed. Now in this video, I'm going to show you five easy strategies that you can implement today that will actually make your calendar productive and help you daily get towards your goals and not feel like a crazy person. What's up guys, Lou here. Welcome back to the channel. Now let's get right in. If you have kids, you know how important this first point is. Now I have two kids. One of them really struggles in the morning when I get him up and bring him downstairs and it's time to go to school. And I'm like, hey, dude, put your shoes on. For some reason, he just can't seem to take his feet and just put them in the shoes. That's just way too difficult. Apparently, he has to do 10, 15, 20 other things, rolling around the floor, picking up things, playing with toys, scratching his head, whatever, before he can actually finally get his feet in the shoes and even though we get to the same goal eventually we could have saved so much time effort and stress to just get it done we take so many steps to do little things in the calendar that actually takes up way more of our time than it should and can sometimes make it more stressful because we're clicking around and we don't know what we're doing enter shortcuts now inside Google Calendar, all you have to do is hit question mark and it will come up with a list of all the keyboard shortcuts that you can use in this view. You can see navigation, different views, different actions that you can do, and it will save you a ton of time. If you've seen my video on Gmail and how I do an inbox zero, it's all shortcut based and the keys are so quick to do actions that would have taken a lot longer to move the mouse, click on things, type in things, click on things again, and then you're back out. So you can see right here, C for create event. So if I'm in Google Calendar, all I have to do is create the event and it will pop right up with here. I can add it in and it's good to go. Now, this might seem silly, but if you're in Calendar a lot and you're using it quite efficiently, you have to learn the shortcuts. They will come up and they will help you throughout your day. All right, let's talk goals. Now, for me, I drive a Tesla. I got a Tesla a few years back and I absolutely love it. Now, one of the features is autopilot when it just drives itself and it's super duper creepy and you just kind of get to your destination and it's taking itself there. It's weird to do it, but over time, you kind of learn to love it. Now, it's a great feature, but essentially what it means is I'm giving up control and I'm putting things on autopilot and I'm letting something else dictate how I essentially get to my destination. And it works pretty well. Now, hopefully the machines never take over and they drive me off a cliff or something like that. That would suck. But essentially it's my own fault because I've given up control to something else and I'm letting it take me to the destination the way it chooses to go. But I've given up control. And this is what so many people have done already with their goals. At the time of filming this, it's February 6th, 2024. The majority of people have already lost track of their goals. Why? Because they just put on autopilot and they think, oh, I'll get to the goal. They haven't really figured out where and how and why to do the daily work involved to get in there. And the problem inside of using your calendar is that we just fill it up with appointments. We just fill it up with the stuff that kind of we need to do the things that are just like essential, the fires we need to put out. A lot of us do not put any kind of work on our goals inside of our calendar. And then we get to the end of the month, the quarter of the year, and we're like, I didn't hit my goal this year again. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what happened. Well, you're not putting it as a priority inside your calendar. So no wonder you're not doing it. So only filling your calendar with work things is absolutely bonkers. You need to make sure that if you have goals that you're trying to achieve, you add them in as well. Now I'll give you a quick example here inside of my calendar. You can see that I am trying to read more this year. Like I'm trying to read, <laughs> I love books. I love listening to audio books, but I know that I really need to read them with my eyes and take in information to make my brain work smarter every day. So I'm just doing a half hour every single day, Monday through Friday. Weekends, I'll give myself a little break because who likes to read on the weekends? But every day, I'm just gonna take a half hour out of my day and make sure that I'm reading. Now, 
what I do, you can see, is that I put the slot in and I'll just move it around wherever it needs to be to make sure that it fits inside of my busy schedule. If I add everything back in here again, like this, you can see that there's not a lot of room, but I'll just find a half hour here, a half hour here, a half hour here, half hour here, and I'm gonna add it in to my day. And you might be saying, well, this is kind of dumb, it doesn't make sense. But if I do a half hour five days a week, that's two and a half hours a week that I've read that I wouldn't have done before. And if I can keep this momentum going all year, that's like 130 hours or something like that of my time that I've spent reading and feeding my brain and make sure that I'm working towards a goal. If I hadn't put that in my calendar, if I hadn't taken the time to slot that in and not give up control, I would never have done this. So this is a huge piece for me. You have goals, you set them, you were all giddy about them at the start of the year. You're like, I'm gonna do it but yet you're not putting the intention behind them because you haven't set them in your calendar as priorities. So I would encourage you to go back and look at your goals and make sure that every week you're doing work towards those goals. Even if it's a little bit of work, that's okay. But if they're in there, that means you're putting time aside and that you're putting dedication into the things that you said you wanted to achieve this year. So add in your goals, add in work, daily, weekly, whatever it is, towards those goals, and you will see a massive shift in your business and in your life by the end of the year. Our next point is to do with task management. Now, my wife does all the grocery shopping in our house. This is awesome. She knows exactly what she's doing. She knows when to get there, what else to go down, all the different things to do, and she's in and out, and she's amazing at getting groceries. Now, every once in a while, I get faced with this task. Something's going on and I'm the one who has to go to the store. Now, I know when I'm going to go to the store, but once I'm there and once I've blocked off the time to be in Target, I have no idea what to do. Unless my wife sends me a detailed list of the things to do and where to go to get them, I'm completely lost and I have completely wasted the time that I set out to be there. And this is exactly what people make the mistake of when it comes to time blocking, and in particular, task batching. And here's what I want to show you. Inside the calendar, if we make, say, a two hour uh, little window here, and we're gonna say, hey, uh, tasks for today. And we make this event right here. Boom, good to go. I've got a task for today. Awesome, that's great. But what am I actually doing here. Now, you could effectively click this, open it up, go into the description and make a bullet list of the tasks that you want to do. That's one way of doing it. And it's great to do that if you remember it and if you're good at making sure that you're on top of all of your notes and different things like that. For me, what I like to do here is I'll block the time off here and I'll just start adding actual tasks into this two hour block. So if I know that I've got four tasks to do, I'll pull up here and I'll go task and I'll say task one, whatever that task may be, enter. Remember from the shortcuts, we'll go E, then I'll add another one, we'll go task two, just make sure that you click task, boom, save, next one, task three, and you'll notice that I'm not using shortcuts, why? Because there is no shortcut for creating tasks, which is annoying, and task, four, boom, like that. Now I know I've got my two hours blocked off for tasks. That's awesome, but I also know exactly which tasks to do. And once I've done them, I can mark them completed, check them off as I go, and I'm way more productive and I can see what I've got done inside of those tasks. So if you ever struggle with this, if you ever use something like a power list, and you have time set for your day to work on your power list items, this is the way I would suggest working through it because not only are you blocking the time to work on those things, but you're also got an active checklist in here to make sure you complete all of those tasks. And just like at the grocery store, I've got all the items, I've checked off, I've made it in time, and now I can get home to doing more fun things. Now, the next thing I like to do is color coding. Why is this? Because I'm a visual person. If I can see things in different lights and different topics to know what they are, I know exactly what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, what I'm doing it for, and when I need to switch off for certain tasks. Now, I've put out a full video on how to set this up yourself right here, but I'm just gonna show you again. You can see that from my different items on my calendar, I have different colors. 
Why is this important for me? Because I know that if it's blue, it's family stuff, it's personal stuff that I need to attend to. If it's red, it's work stuff, it's money-making activities. If it's black, it's tasks I need to make sure I'm taken care of. If it's purple, it's self-development stuff that I'm working on. And if it's yellow, it's an important task that I need to make sure I do, like making sure I pay everyone on time. So color coding just helps me know exactly what I'm doing for the day, what parts of my business I'm working in and my life as well to make sure that today is gonna to be a super productive day. All right, last one here for you guys is the daily agenda. Now, if you're a fan of a show like Mad Men or something like that, when he's in the office smoking a cigar, drinking his whiskey and stuff, and he has an assistant come in and she's like, hey, uh, you need to do this, this, this today. Here's what's going on. Okay, next up you have this. Like that is one of like the fantasies of working, right? It's like, okay, I can just sit back and someone else can tell me what's going on in my day, what to do, and I can just go and execute. Now, even if this may not be completely necessary in your business or mine at this point, there is something really cool you can do inside of Google Calendar to make sure that without having to go in and check everything, you can be notified of what your day is gonna look like. All you have to do here is come to the left-hand side in your calendar. You can choose whichever calendar you want to get these notifications from, or you can choose them all. We're just gonna hit options. We're gonna go settings and sharing, and you're gonna scroll down until you see this daily agenda right here. You're gonna hit this and go to email, and now every morning you're gonna get an email with your daily agenda for that calendar. This is such a cool setting. And as you can see in my email right here, this was from today and it's telling me exactly what I need to be doing and what's going on in my world today. So now, instead of having to open up all these different apps and see what's going on, you can get an email, bing. Hey dude, here's what's going on today. Make sure you do it right. Don't mess it up and we'll be all set and good to go. So that's the daily agenda. I really love getting those morning emails because it sets me up for the day and makes sure that I'm in the right mindset to attack my day because I know exactly what is coming down the pipe. So with just these five easy tips that you can implement today, your calendar can go from an unwanted family member, a Christmas dinner that's stressing you out, to something that is making you hyper productive in your business and making sure that you're working on the right thing at the right time and not taking up so much time inside of this app that's taken away from your productivity. Now, if you do anything else inside the Google Calendar that we missed today, drop them in the comments below. I would love to see them. If you want to check out all the things that I have to offer, look in the description below for the newsletters, the masterminds and all the other stuff we've got coming out like our time management course. Otherwise, I will see you on the next one.